I, I like to identify it with world peace because it's kind of a provocative thing because of the trite cliche paradigm. And I think of it as almost a rebellious idea. And I mean, it's a conversation that we should try having is what's your vision of world peace? Does it mean that there's no major wars being fought, that there's no more household arguments between husbands and wives? <laughs> That's a high bar. I don't yeah. think we'll get there, but I think we can. I think we can get there eventually. I'm, I'm a pretty ruthlessly optimistic guy. Needless to say, when I say eventually, there's no, not going to be bickering. <laughs> but uh, like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not so hilariously optimistic as to think people are going to look back and be like, I remember when that podcast came out, we put down our guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if we can get one soldier to put down his gun and say, this is because of, with a seriously wrong t-shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like when we're talking about changing the society, you're talking about changing the people in the society. And I've been fascinated with the idea of conflict resolution, especially trying to have positive conflicts. And I think that that is a legitimate starting point to working towards world peace, because if you're changing people's methods of disagreeing with each other on a small scale, if that was to catch some sort of fire and become a cultural change a shift then i think that would become reflected in the larger ways that the conflicts play out on a national scale yeah and this is this is the sisyphean task of world peace sisyphean the myth of sisyphus he pushes a boulder up a hill repeatedly for all time right i've heard this alternative view of sisyphus of rather than him feeling hard done by about it if you're just like okay yeah no i'm gonna be rolling this boulder up a hill well i'm gonna have as much fun doing it as i possibly can so push the boulder up fuck yeah yeah and it feels good to have purpose and maybe you're never gonna actually reach world peace but the trying can be worthwhile even if it doesn't end up in the result I think there's there's really, really good, not evidence, but framing. There's really, really good framing for the potential that we're entering closer and closer to a utopia all the time. People have problems with globalism and, and global trade and all these things that come up out of internationalism. But ultimately, internationalism is an incredible amount of progress that we've made recently. And the fact that we're all a global community, we share information with other countries. Increasingly, increasingly, we're, we're all part of one global thing. I think even the tyrannical governments and things like that that still do exist are just sort of becoming less and less relevant as people have the ability to directly deal with one another. Citizens who can talk to citizens in other countries will often not go to war because the citizens can actually be like, hey, uh, you know, I like you. I think you're fine. It's just our governments are both shitty. And they're like, yeah, fuck governments. So the way that like the Germans and Japanese were demonized during World War II and then used to build this like patriotism. this anti- Right. Like that just can't happen when you can talk to the people yourself. So if we all just put ourselves on the same side as everyone else, the side of, hey, how do humans achieve world peace? How do humans build an awesome society? That's what everybody wants. And we're just exploring some different ideas and different nuances and different ways to go about achieving that. Nobody's on the side of... Yeah, no malevolent entities. There are no malevolent entities. Except the lizard people. But once- Oh, well, yeah, I think... The lizard people, the shape-shifting lizard people that secretly rule the earth? Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, they exist, right? Just well, yeah, they, they literally exist, and they actually <laughs> feed energetically on the misery of all humans. Yeah, I think it's an interesting and useful metaphor, the idea that the badness in people is multiplied by fear and misery and discord and all these. It's the same It's the same argument as that yeah, misanthropy causes more misanthropy. So you right, need to, like, right. stand up to misanthropy and not get misanthropic when you see it happening. It's going to sound maybe, like, trite, but we're all humans. That's the one thing we have in common with everyone, for sure, every time. I've got a concept for the mental toolkit of the decentralized world peacekeeper that... I strive to be and I hope other people strive to be as well, which is rather than talking about agreeing to disagree, I think in almost all cases, we're actually talking about agreeing to almost agree because you're still going to have disagreements. And so not only acknowledging that, but realizing it's a good thing because the alternative is horrifying. Yeah. The uh, everyone believing the same thing all the time 
forever. <laughs> yeah. Or just like, even if like identifying with a faction and then saying like, Oh, I'm an environmentalist now. So I believe everything that all environmentalists <laughs> believe because we yeah. all believe the same thing. Right. We, we don't live in that universe and it's really, really fucking lucky that we don't. Yeah. Uh, everyone's on your team. Yeah. Yours. You want to sign up for every team. Because there's no scarcity of membership and there's no scarcity of how many teams you're allowed to be on. Yeah. So why are you going to say such and such team is my enemy when you guys both have the shared goal of having a better world in the future? And maybe you guys have something to teach each other. You almost definitely have something to teach each other. Those morsels of good that are at the center of all the different ideologies. People subscribe to them for a reason, and it's because there's something beautiful there that you can learn and that you can take into yourself if you're willing to agree to agree on most things and look into the beautiful heart and soul of the ideology and pick that flower for yourself because there's enough flowers for everybody. You're not talking to Darth Vader. It's a human being. There Even is no Darth Vader's a human being. He pulls that helmet off. He's a crinkly old man. You feel sorry for him. He had a hard life. The, <laughs> the first three movies, whatever. <laughs> There's, there, are, there are no malevolent entities. And showing other people unconditional positive regard, acknowledging that they're real humans and not monsters, and agreeing to almost agree with them, we can build a better future together. Wouldn't that be nice? Yay! Yay! <laughs> a bunch of kids cheering. Right? <laughs>